So as promised, this first video, we're going to talk about building the right knowledge. What do you need to know in SEO right now to deliver the highest quality service possible? And more importantly, I want to teach you how to do the least, but get paid the most. That doesn't mean cheating clients. That doesn't mean cutting corners. That means focusing on the elements of the service that are actually going to move the needle, not from some headline that we saw somewhere, but what are the core elements of SEO that we need to do very, very well to maximize the chances of getting this client results. And I say chances because like I said, marketing is kind of a crapshoot. We don't know what Google's going to do, but we do want to have a system that's going to put us in the best position to succeed no matter who we're working with. And SEO is a very complicated service. We can't just slap keywords on a page and build links anymore. We have to know what we're doing, but it's very easy to get caught in the trap of trying to do way too much because you see all these things that need to be done. Again, the key here is knowing what to do at a very high level, reducing the amount of work we have to do, but still maximizing the value of our service. And SEO is just so much easier to sell if people trust you and you have a good reputation. And that starts with being an expert in your craft. I kind of jokingly patted myself on the back when I showed you those, uh, you know, where I was featured, but I take pride in that. I take pride in the fact that I put in the time and the hours to learn and master this craft. So what I want to talk about is, is what you need to know to rank in Google right now. Just the bare minimum, the things that you need to do. If you can do these things for all your clients' websites, they're going to have success. And I hate to have to say this, but your service is your product and quality is everything, right? If you were an e-commerce store, you might be selling mouses or microphones, right? The quality of your product is really what's going to start to make or break your company, right? That for us as agencies is our service, the quality control and how we deliver our service. If you know how to deliver a high quality service, no matter what the market does, if we have a crash, you'll always be okay. If you can master this skill set, you'll be okay. You always be able to eat. So now let me step off my soapbox and get back to our presentation here. So what is working in SEO right now? So I'm going to tell you three very simple things and don't leave and roll your eyes because I'm going to get more detailed in this, but I'm just going to tell you the principles of what's working right now. Number one is create websites that are technically sound, that are built based on Google's webmaster guidelines. It's free information. Google's telling you exactly how they want to crawl and index websites. Read it. Do yourself a favor. Proper UX, meaning building a website that attracts and keeps your target customer. Who are they? Know who they are. Know how to speak to them with your website and make it fast and on mobile, right? Not overly complicated. Technically sound, build it for your customer, make it fast and make sure it's mobile responsive. WordPress pretty much does all those things out of the box, right? Very easy. Number two is populate that website with pages that speak to your target customer. Keyword research, on page, page titles, all that. But just make sure that the content that you have on your website is good, contains keywords, and speaks to your target audience. That's number two. Very basic. Number three is promote your website hard, aka get links to your website. You know this, but just do it the right way. Do some outreach, write for other websites, build partnerships, share your stuff on social media, post on Reddit, post on Quora, promote your website like you would promote anything else. If you can do those three things, then you will have organic success. It might take more time depending on where your website's at, depending on what the competition's doing. But if you can do those three things, then you will get more traffic from Google, right? Now that's not it. I'm going to go into this in very much detail, but I just want to make sure that you guys know that what's not working is schemes and tactics and shortcuts and looking for that new hack, trying to learn Python for SEO. You don't need to do that, guys. I'm not going to tell you not to. I'm not going to say that it's not important to learn Python, but if you want to make money selling SEO services, you don't have to do all that. You just don't. If you can focus on doing those three things simple, then you will get your clients results. But yet every time I talk to agencies and audit what they're doing, they're trying to do all these things, can do this and do that. Like, no, no, no. If it doesn't map to those three things, get rid of it because it's costing you money. And we're going to talk more about that. Bottom line is just there's no shortcut. So if you those three things take work, they take man hours. There's no automation for that. There's no hacks. You just got to do the work and you got to find the people to help you do the work, which again, we're going to talk about in detail, but there's no tactics. There's no shortcuts. If you can do those three things and accept the fact that there is work involved in doing SEO, then you will be able to build a profitable company. And I'm not talking shit about black hat SEOs or people who are looking for shortcuts. I was there too. I got into this game through overhearing some dude at a coffee shop talking about linking schemes 10 years ago, right? So that's how I got into the game. I came in as a black hat, but things changed. It, you just can't manipulate the algorithm like that anymore. It just doesn't work. So why bother? 
I, more than anyone, wish it was easy was like it was back then. I'd be making a lot more money than I am now, but it's not. These are the rules. We play by them. And if you can play by them, you're going to make money. So as I said, a problem that a lot of people have is trying to do too much. You don't have to get caught up in headlines that you see everywhere in tweets and this type of stuff. Stick to the basics. You seen Varsity Blues when he's hitting the dude over the helmet? Stick to the basics. Stick to the basics. That's all you got to do. Stick to the basics. Do less and do it better. If you can do that, if you can shrink your service down to the core elements and blow those out and be a baller at keyword research, be a baller at content creation, you're going to make a lot of money. But if you get distracted by all these different shiny objects and try and jam that into your service here and figure out where it fits there, it's a waste of time. And more importantly, it's a waste of money. Do less and do it better. So let's talk about that, right? What do you have to do to get more. I've been talking all this shit. Now it's time to back it up, right? I call this the 80 20 of SEO campaigns. There's six elements of the SEO service that you need to do to get results, right? So I said those three things, those are kind of a, a high level framework, right? Now let's get more specific and more tactical. Let's talk in terms of SEO. What do you have to do to get the most results for your clients' websites? Number one is technical corrections, right? If they have some sort of technical issues holding them back, they're just not going to get ranked and indexed properly. So we want to make sure that we're cleaning those up and taking care of those, right? Number two is keyword research. You've got to make sure that that website has been targeting the right keywords, right? And that means also if the website is, is in a very competitive space, understanding how to find less competitive keywords for them and implementing those and getting them traffic for those. Number three is on-page optimizations. These things still apply. Body text, multimedia on the page, page titles, meta description, schema, all that stuff. Anything that goes into building a page is important. We got to do that for our clients. Number four is content strategy. So, you know, I, I like to break and we'll talk about this more when we talk about the specifics of how we deliver our service. But I like to break the website, the campaign almost into two parts. Number one is focusing on the existing assets that they have. So that's where keyword research and on page come on. So think optimizing product pages, service pages, software landing pages, whatever it is that they're selling, that's focusing on the existing portion of the website. Then when we're talking about building new assets, that's where content comes in, right? So yes, we want to rank for our bottom funnel keywords, content, anything that's going to drive that client more revenue. We want to focus first on optimizing those keywords and getting them ranked for that. But after we do that, there's a whole lot more traffic out there that we can get by building additional pages, right? That's why content is important. Content gives us more opportunities to rank for keywords that they don't have on their website. So number four of the 80-20 of SEO campaigns is content strategy, knowing how to go out, find new keywords, turn those into new pages and get those implemented on the website. Incredibly important. Number five is content creation. You can see I've got an asterisk next to this one and I'll tell you why in a minute. And number six is link acquisition, right? So just recapping real quick, technical questions, keyword research, on-page optimizations, content strategy, content creation and link acquisition. Those are the six elements of SEO that you need to do to get the most out of your results. But you can see how I shrunk this down. You don't see competitive analysis in here, right? You don't see a lot of these other things that, yes, they're important for SEO, but they're not critical to getting results. Tell me how doing, taking your time, your team's time to do a competitive analysis is going to ultimately result in more traffic. Yes, it will help guide the strategy. Yes, it might help guide keywords. But if you think about it, you don't have to do that. Right. So I'm talking about stripping these things away and I'll tell you how you can layer that back on later to make more revenue. But for right now, we're talking about stripping this down and simplifying our service to just focus on these main elements. Right. So think about it this way. If you can just have to do these six things, then you can focus on deepening your service and getting really good at these th six things. And even more importantly, the reason why I have these asterisks here for content creation and link acquisition is because I outsource those. Right. So that's two less things to worry about because those are very content writing and link acquisition are very big things. I'm not trying to glaze over those. But if you can focus on these four things now, technical corrections, keyword research, on page optimizations and content strategy, those four things, you have a million dollar business. If you can do those four things very well and figure out how to outsource the rest, you're in business. But look, of course, it's not that simple because there's so many types of SEO campaigns. There's e-commerce. There's B2B, there's software, there's local SEO, there's publisher campaigns, like if you wanted to work with like a Forbes.com. And each one of these types of campaigns means a different level of effort. That's what LOE stands for, level of effort. And you need to understand what these are because that's going to have different skill sets required. And that's going to dictate how you'll need to staff your agency if you can use offshore or local talent. You've got to understand these things.
So let me run you through this real quick. Basically what you're seeing here is a scale is if there's a one, then it means it's not important. Up to a 10, that means it's very important. So for e-commerce, technical corrections are very important. Where for B2B or local SEO, they're not as important. But publisher, technical SEO is really important, right? So what does that mean? Because an e-commerce is gonna have 10, potentially tens of thousands of pages. It's gonna be a much bigger website. So making small technical changes, fixing a canonical tag or something like that is gonna have a big impact. Whereas a B2B website, think of like your website as an agency owner or a local website, they're gonna be much smaller. Probably WordPress websites where WordPress handles a lot of these things out of the box. Where a big e-commerce website, a big publisher website is probably gonna be on some old custom legacy CMS, something like that, that's gonna require a lot more technical acumen to do the work. So just looking at that one in a silo, the difference between having to do very advanced technical SEO versus not very advanced technical work means a a two different types of people, right? A technical SEO to you as an agency is gonna be somebody very expensive, very experienced, but necessary if you wanna work with those type of clients. Whereas with a local client, you probably don't need a very experienced technical mind to fix minor technical issues if there are any on a local or B2B website. Keyword research you can see though is a 10 all the way across. On-page optimizations are also very high. This is GMB or, or local optimizations. Obviously that only matters for local websites. Content strategy, pretty much important for all, except for local. Local websites don't really need to be cranking out blogs, just not really important. So content strategy, content creation, So obviously content strategy and content creation go hand in hand. And then links are pretty much gonna be important for everyone, a little bit less important though for local SEO campaigns. So again, why does this matter? Because as we push on, I'm gonna show you this, how this pans out in a little bit more detail. But basically what we're saying here is that this is gonna require different levels of staffing based on what type of SEO you're doing. So the point here is that this concept of focus doesn't just apply to the type of service we're offering. So stripping out the things that don't drive results, but it also applies to who you work with as clients. If you're trying to work with e-commerce and B2B and SaaS and local, this requires different people, different processes, different deliverables, which basically means having to alter your service for everyone that you work with. If you are having trouble keeping clients, strip it down and focus on just one industry. But honestly, even more so, if you can, and I know this is hard, but focus on a niche. So a niche within a niche or niche inception, if you will. I thought that was funny when I made this. So for example, we only do B2B SEO. My agency now, if you wanna hire Webers as an agency, if you're an e-commerce, huge e-commerce website, I might tell you that I work with you and then refer you to a partner and take a cut of that. Same thing with local or anything else. I'll basically just push those leads to other people. We focus explicitly on B2B SEO. Why? Because that allows me to not have to have a technical person on staff, in-house, in retainer, but as this previous slide showed you here too. And I didn't cover this, but there's different, like B2B can definitely pay more than a local client. Probably not as much as an e-commerce website because e-commerce SEO scales to a much larger level. Think about it. If they have 10,000 products, you have plenty of work to do. Whereas a B2B website, if they only have 10 pages, you have a lot less work to do. But that means you have to build a lot more content and links, et cetera, which we'll talk about. So we choose folks on SEO, B2B SEO because the budgets are bigger. They can pay at least $3,000 a month and it's less work from a technical point of view, which means I'm able to build a much different, cheaper to me type of staff and focus mainly on keyword research, on-page and content. Those three things when they're grouped together, keyword research, content and on-page can probably be delivered by one role as opposed to having a tech SEO, a keyword person, a content person, a link person, all that's four people where I can do that with one role here, right? So this is important to start thinking about, about it's not just about how much revenue you can get, but it's also about how, much expense and costs you have to incur as an agency because these things are going to dictate who you hire. But also more importantly, I choose B2B because I'm comfortable in the space. The blueprint is B2B sales. It's high ticket sales. Webris is B2B. I'm constantly doing B2B sales. David's company that I help out with, Coding is for Losers, is also B2B. We're selling to other agencies. So I'm comfortable in the space because I do it every day. So it makes sense for me to deliver that to clients as well. So you should start to think about what it is that you enjoy doing, what you're good at, and using this matrix that I built for you guys to understand how that's gonna impact your potential revenue, but also your potential internal costs. So if you're more technical folks on e-com, if you're better with content, go B2B. So e-com and B2B are hardly niches. <laughs> these are these are industries, and so it's not a niche. When I say a niche too, if so if you're newer, uh, lower in revenue currently, if you're really struggling with a lot of these things that I laid out in the beginning parts of this video, niche down further. So this one said a niche and a niche. So only work with gynecologists, only work with gyms, et cetera. Focus on a vertical and just go all in on that. 
your marketing, your branding, everything should speak to that. We only work with gyms. We only work with gynecologists, et cetera. And what that's going to allow you to do is two things. Number one is it's going to allow you to build a service, man, that's so compact and so good because you're only working with that one type of client. So you know the industry super well. You can onboard. You just fire them out and get them results left and right. But also, if you're pitching against me and I'm pitching against you and we're both pitching a gyno and you only work with gynos, who do you think he's going to choose? Even if you cost more, right? So having a niche doesn't mean you have to charge less. It can mean you can actually charge more because you can really position yourself as an expert. You know, if you're running into the pricing thing, then like don't work with yoga studios or coffee shops because you know they're not going to have a budget, right? Focus on finding a niche that has a budget that you can go in and build a name for yourself. I promise you, you will grow a lot faster and have a lot less headaches too, which is always nice. So now let's dive into the service elements in detail. Let's talk about technical corrections, right? I don't wanna just tell you how to do technical corrections. Let's, let's talk about how to actually do it. So we don't wanna to have to spend 40 hours or more auditing a website. That work is not fun. For some people, it is not fun for me, but tech people are also expensive, as I said, and the results don't always align with the effort, right? There are more cases than not of running massive audits that turn back awesome insights, but after they're implemented, they don't really impact the traffic Then, hey, we found this one fix and traffic exploded. That's more rare than not that you're going to find a small fix that's going to make a huge impact, right? You can debate me all you want, but these are facts. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've seen thousands of audits and more often than not, it does not come back in big changes in traffic or changes in traffic that you can track back to that audit. But if the website is built on WordPress, most technical issues are taken care of, but there's still a few things that we need to get done from here. So the main goal here is to identify the technical roadblocks that when fixed will result in improved site performance and rankings. So again, as I just kind of went on a mini rant about is that that's not always the case where you can find these juicy technical corrections that are going to have a big impact. And guys, I am not denouncing technical SEO. Technical SEO is incredibly important. Technical SEO is incredibly important though for certain types of websites, right? It's kind of like the rich websites on the web. Technical SEO is awesome for them. That's why they can pay them more. But for the rest of us peasants down here who don't have that type of technical acumen, I used to, but it's just not something I'm interested in anymore. We want to focus on catching issues that we don't, again, need to spend 40 hours or more doing. We still need to do a technical audit, guys. For every website, you should do a technical audit. I know I just wanted a mini rant. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. Technical SEO is important, right? For every website. Again, more important for bigger websites, but still very important if you're doing a small local or B2B website. We still want to run some sort of audit because if there are technical issues that's holding the website back, if there are, again, it's a small chance, but if there are, if you can fix those, well, you're going to drive some results for them right away. So we want to focus on catching issues with things like indexation, issues with canonical tags, no index tags that are misplaced, basically pages that should be indexed but are not indexed because of some poor coding on the website. Uh, number two is low quality pages. So thin, non-value adding content, like uh, tag pages, like on WordPress, you know, you like add 50 tags. Those all generate new pages that are super low quality that get indexed by Google. We don't want those. We want to focus on our websites to only have the top pages in Google or the pages that we want Google to index. Anything else, if it's indexed, it's hurting the overall performance of our website. So we want to get rid of those. Issues with status codes. This is another very common one. 404 pages, botched 301 redirects. We want to make sure that we're reviewing these things so we can, again, fix them and hopefully improve the performance of the website. So we also want to do this for organization and context, right? So when we are like, guys, I, I, I'm not saying don't do good client work, right? But I'm saying we do want to, this is a business here, right? But at the same time, we do have to do good work for people. And going through the technical evaluation process will help us with organization and context, meaning you can't really work on a website that you have no context for in an industry that you don't really work in without putting some time in to do some research and understand what that website sells and how it sells, right? So having a full website crawl, having website architecture and hierarchy, these are really important things that are just good for the context. So this audit, as opposed to having to go out and you know do these things randomly and spend 40 hours doing it, we built an audit to do this. And this is what we call the website quality audit. So after the technical evaluation process, we want to go into keyword research. So like I said, I like to group websites into two parts, existing pages and then new pages. So keyword research, we like to do it in two parts. One is for the existing pages. This is what we call like the low hanging fruit, right? Again, the faster we can get traffic to turn around, whether that's through a technical change or fixing some issues on some pages, the better off that client relationship is going to be, the more traffic they're going to see. If they see traffic, guys, they're going to keep paying you. So that's important here that we get the more traffic the easiest way possible. So we like to focus on the low hanging fruit pages. That means pages that are already there, 
pages that already might have some ranks. If we can go through, we can do keyword research to identify the proper keyword targeting for that page and then make those changes. Well, hey, now we're cooking with gas, right? So the goal here is to improve the performance of key pages already on the website through keyword targeting, AKA tackling those low hanging fruit. So I got a template for you guys here. I just wanna show you how we do keyword research. And the beautiful part about all these templates, guys, is they're all built off the back end website quality. Of. So when I was talking about kind of like the time wasting things, another thing is, is having to build templates as you go, right? So what we did is we built the website quality audit to be then after that's done, it's like a Swiss army knife. After it's done, we then turn it into the keyword research file by just making a copy of it, deleting some columns. We have all the data that we need to start keyword research. And then after keyword research, when we're going to on page, it's the same thing. We're just modifying the keyword research file to then become the on page file. Cause it's got the, it's still got all that data that we had from the website quality audit, the page titles, the meta descriptions, the word count that's on page data. It's there. Another copy. We've then got a new deliverable, which is the on page optimization file. So what's the scope of on page? The scope of on page is going to be page titles, metadata, internal linking headings and subheadings. That's H twos, H threes, H ones, et cetera, structured data, keyword usage or topical page targeting. Right. And I'm not big into like keyword stuffing or like LSI and semantic, whatever, all that stuff. Just make the, the page what it's supposed to be about. There's tools out that you can help that if you want to do additional analysis with tools so like keyword usage, that's fine. But the point is, is that you have these keywords, the page should be about those keywords, right? Both on the page and contextually having the content on that page support what that keyword is about. And then the page needs to be delivering the right searcher or user experience. That's part of keyword research and on page. And again, part of that UX of understanding who that audience is, but just make that page speak to them. It's not really that big of a deal. So of course we got a template for this too. Let's jump in and take a look. And it's an important concept here too, guys, is we use these page outlines. We don't write content, right? I told you that we outsource content. So anytime there's writing involved, and we don't do some of these things like writing because writing is subjective. We wanna remove the opinion from our services and use data and facts. Keyword data is data and facts. Page title optimization is data and facts, right? You're writing page titles based on that. When we're talking about writing lengthy content, there's all sorts of margin for error. And that opens up issue, potential issues with our services where a client could complain about that. So we don't want to do that. So what we do instead is we deliver very detailed page level SEO recommendation outlines to the client for them to then write it or ha have a writer write it for them. Really small, important concept that we're going to talk about more in a minute. So next up here is content strategy. So we've already gotten through the technical keyword research and on page. Now we're moving into the content strategy. What goes into this? Well, there's audience and competitive research. We also want to audit in a, the existing content and make improvements on that. Again, guys, anytime that we can do less work by working on the pages that they already have, AKA existing content and improving that, then we have a much faster chance of ranking that page quicker and turning around traffic. It's always going to be faster to get traffic to an existing page that's indexed, that has links, than building a new page and having to go through the whole SEO process on that page. So understand the audience and then going through and auditing their existing content and making improvements to it. Once we do that, then we want to find new keywords for content creation, right? With those new keywords, we then want to create new topics for content. Then I want to go back to generating those content outlines. Again, you could be writing the content here. I suggest that you don't, but then again, finding new keywords. So you can then see here that how this becomes an ongoing process. So when we're talking about also extending the life of contracts going from six to 12 to 18 to 24 months. Content creation is a huge part of that, right? Because we did the SEO process, technical keywords on page the, with the website that's now done. Unless they have a huge website, you can't replicate that process more than once, maybe every one, one, one or two years. But if we're doing content, and we're constantly finding new topics and saying, hey, build these pages, build these pages, build these pages, build these pages. We like to deliver between four and eight of these new page recommendations to the client each month. This is something that helps us to extend the life of contracts because we're consistently providing value and we're consistently delivering opportunities for them to get more traffic, which again is why we're here. So this is something that you can scale out and replicate. And when I show you our project plans, you'll see how this plays out. So let's take a look at our content stack. Let's look at all the deliverables that we have in here our buyer personas template, the content audit template, the keyword gap analysis for keyword research, and then also how we come up with content topics and how we track that. So I already said this for content creation, guys, we're at this part of the process, just outsource it. If you have a really good writer in the house, I mean, if you want to do it, I mean, you can fight. I, I get pushed back on this stuff all the time, but I'm telling you, I've been through this a million times. It's easier to outsource either 
find a writing company that only writes that's really good. Or what I do is I tell the client, and this also helps me to pre-qualify guys, as you get more into this game, you build a reputation, you'll be able to turn away clients. You don't have to work with everyone. And I suggest that you don't, you should pick and choose clients that fit your niche, fit your process are a good fit culturally for your agency, but then also have resources to spend on more stuff because you're gonna be making recommendations to do stuff. If they don't do it, then they're not gonna see more traffic. So, you know, if you're just getting started, this is something that you're probably gonna have to lean on as a crutch to maybe use like a, uh, some outsourced writers, an outsourced writing company, but it's really important that you do not pay for the content to be created. Do not ever pay for something on behalf of a client. If they say, hey, uh, we don't have a writer, can you take care of that? Yeah, that's fine. We can write it for you, but it's gonna cost you $300 per page, right? You wanna make sure that you're getting paid and profiting on what they're paying you because number one, it will probably make them wanna be handling that in-house. And any again, anytime that we can put that back on them, that subjectivity, that opinion, let them handle it. You don't want, you don't need that smoke. You don't want those headaches. Let them handle it. Of course, you can write stuff in house. That's completely up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just saying I've been there before and there's an easier way to do it that you can still make money from. Oh, now here we are. Link building this is my little drum roll. You can't see my fingers, down here, but this is link building is always everyone's favorite part of SEO. It's always the most asked about questions because links are still now and have always been probably the most important part of ranking, right? And if you've seen any of my stuff in the past, you know that I've been a huge proponent of bringing link building in house, building a small offshore team, doing outreach, getting high quality links because that's what moved the needle, etc. However, I have slightly changed my point of view on link building in 2020. And here is why link building has become so labor intensive that it's basically like having a service inside of a service, which is SEO. SEO is already a lot of work. Link building is just as much work. You need a separate team of people, a separate skill set separate PM, separate plan just to execute it. The way that I look at link building is that if you're doing over a certain revenue point and you're really focused on getting larger enterprise corporate clients, that's when you bring it in house. But if you're doing anywhere less than a couple million a year in revenue, I believe that you should outsource it because it's going to hinder you from growing. I'm telling you the issues that you have with quality, the issues that you have with pricing, the issues that you have with late delivery, the back and forth with clients. Again, we want to remove the opinion of subjectivity from our services. Two people can look at a link, uh, you and the client, and one, you think this is a good link, but the client's saying, hey, this is spammy piece of shit, remove it, I don't want to pay for it, right? It slows you down, it adds more bumps to the road, and until you get to that point where you say, okay, we can charge premium top dollar, 500 to to $1,000 per link, then we can bring it in house, right? So. Again, when you're smaller, just outsource it. And if you guys are looking for companies to outsource it to, join the Blueprint Slack channel. I've got a list of very, very reputable, high quality link vendors that you can get links from and just outsource it to them. Just pay them per link. It's super easy. And then what we do too, because that's what we do at our agency Webris now, we outsource link building completely to a vendor. We charge the client an expense fee for that link. So just like I said with content where you don't want to be fronting the client for anything, they have to know that, hey, links come at a cost because we have to write guest post content, we've got to send outreach emails, sometimes they want us to pay to get included, we pass that cost along on to you. But we're still charging for link building because we're helping PM that. So we're honest with the client, we're saying, hey, look, we're doing outreach, we're getting links from relationships, we're gonna charge you for our time to manage this. That means setting up the pages that you need links to, which is coming from our previously defined process, right? The output of keyword research and on page is a list of pages that need links. We're passing that and we're saying, hey, these are the pages we're gonna focus on, here's our current rankings, we're gonna build links to these, right? So we're charging for the time and the management of link building still, but we're outsourcing the actual link building. We're still charging for, for it, out, but we're still charging for it, but we're outsourcing. And then we're charging an expense fee for every link acquired. So that means every month the client's going to get an additional expense from the link building. Now that's all got to be pre-approved by them. You've got to talk to them through that through the sales process, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But that's how we handle it. And then when you get to a certain point when you're saying, okay, look, at, we only want to work with Fortune 50 companies. We've got to bring link building in-house. It needs to become more of a PR service as opposed to link building service, meaning you're going to go after resource pages. You're going to go after getting featured on relevant, massive publications for that client, which means then if you're charging premium placements, you can bring high quality people in-house and handle that in-house. But if you're trying to piece it together, while you're already doing SEO, it's going to be too much. The other option there, though, is only doing link building. So again, the course that I have that I built that a couple of years ago that's still hyper relevant now talks about building a small, agile, low cost offshore team to do the, find the links, prospecting, send the outreach emails 
and then manage the project too to get these links live. Because the market for links right now is about, you know, 150 to 200 bucks for a solid, good, high DA link, right? Guest post link, sponsor post, what have you. So to be able to meet, to be able to jam your labor costs into that 150 to 200 bucks per link, there's not a lot of margin there, right? To, to then have to support all the other things that you do for SEO. But if you're only doing link building, then you can build a link building agency, just like the vendors that we outsource it to, and then sell the SEO agency. So here's my thoughts, finally summed up, wrapped up on link building in 2020. You either outsource it completely, right? Just do SEO, outsource it, charge, still charge the client for link building and manage that for them, charge them for the management fee, but then pay, have them pay an expense fee for every link place, which is just the vendor's cost. That's option number one. That's what I highly recommend. Option number two is to just be a link building agency to only do link building and deliver links for other SEO agencies. And then option three is to bring link building in house, but only when you get to a certain revenue point where you can sustain high quality local people to do the prospecting and outreach and charge a premium placement for those links. That's my thoughts on link building. Take it for what you will. And just to drive this home, this is what I call the PIA factor. PIA stands for pain in the ass factor. So let's look at this a little bit more because I kind of alluded to this, but let's break down link building a little bit more. And this also applies to content as well. So let's say we want to get 10 links per month for a client. And it's around 200 bucks per link. That's about $2,000 of revenue for you, right? You could charge for time, but most people charge for every link placed. That's kind of the standard, right? You charge per link placed. But within that, you got to put in a little time and effort for strategy, call that 150 bucks, little time and effort for prospecting, call that 200 bucks, little time and effort for outreach, call that 800 bucks. So you're netting about 850 bucks on that $2,000, right? Not too bad, about a 40% margin. But what you're not factoring in there is the pain in the ass factor, right? That's everything over here in black. That means the burnt relationships with the client. So if you're send, if you're building in their opinion, what are bad links, it's going to sour your entire SEO contract. So bad link building, which is a small part for 850 bucks could destroy a $5,000 a month contract for you. That's pain in the ass. Number one, number two is the lack of opportunities over time. Sometimes you just hit a wall with how many opportunities you can find when doing link building. Another one again is quality complaints. Again, if the client is constantly sending links back saying, we don't want this, go do it again. Then you're losing money on those links placed. Resource management, just manning it again, prospector, outreach person, a PM. That's a whole different set of skills than what we're doing for keyword research, technical content. You're going to have to build another team. That's hiring more people. That's more headaches. Project management, account management, and then of course, replicating across clients. So this example that I gave you here of $2,000 is for one client. But what about we're doing that for 10, 50, 100 clients? The pain in the ass factor multiplies. It's something that I strongly suggest you start incorporating, and not into just your SEO, but everything in your day-to-day, -day, the PIA factor, coined here. You heard it first. So let's go back and recap the core elements. We went through them all in detail. Technical evaluation, keyword research, on-page optimizations, content strategy, and then asterisks for content creation and link acquisition, right? So those four things really have become the core of what your SEO service could and should be. And again, we want to focus on, you saw the templates, you saw how deep we go, how high quality those four simple things are, but those four simple things are what can make up a lot of that traffic growth. So at the end of the day though, it's not just about doing the work because if you're doing this for your own website, absolutely, those are the core things. You don't have to worry about anything else. But when you're selling this to people, we have to add in what I call the service layer because at the end of the day, what are people paying for? Number one, they're paying for results, right? Big time results, that's what they want. They're paying you to get the more traffic. But what they're also paying for is for them to not have to do this themselves. In order for them to feel comfortable paying you a lot of money to do that, you've got to add in the service level, the service layer for them to feel comfortable with that, right? So that means things like account management, answering their emails, sending them emails, setting up meetings, handling questions, all that stuff. These things stack up and they pile up. It's really important. You have to do, have great account management, great client service, great support. Client calls. You know, a lot of clients will want to review a report. You got to have people that can jump on the phone with people and talk to people intelligently. Project management is another one, right? That's something, I mean, we charge for all these things in here, the service level. But again, I'm going to show you in a coming video how we price all these things out and take the service and turn it into a, a, a business. But project management is incredibly important, making sure that things are getting done on time, the tasks are allocated to the right people, you're load balancing your resources, you're not over assigning people work. You're adjusting things based on de delivery and due dates. Sometimes things slide. You have to have a really good handle on project management. Reporting is also really important. Clients want to see that you are listening to what they care about, their goals, their KPIs, and you're reporting against those. You're showing how their money, their investment is paying dividends in terms of 
their traffic and what their goals are. And then presentation decks and data visualization. So basically every time that we send a spreadsheet to a client, they don't care about spreadsheets. We also add a, a deck on top of that. That deck has data visualization and it has screenshots. It's clearly broken down. So they can clearly understand that this 10,000 row queued research file, what we learned from it, what they need to take from it. So they don't have to go through and, and, and visualize all that. And of course, this all cum culminates into what I call the five phases of an SEO campaign. Now, this is something that has become a tremendous pitch tool from us because I'm able to take these very simple things and turn it into what I call a system. And it makes clients feel comfortable when I'm pitching them that, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's done this before. He's developed a system in a framework, right? So when we're talking about, again, taking this these different elements of SEO and turning them into a service and into a business. We also have to think about how we're going to position this and pitch this to clients and get them to sell and get them to buy into what we're selling. So I've just grouped these things into what I call the five phases. It's learning, improving, building, promoting, evaluating. These are the core of what we teach in the blueprint training. And then all of these different things map to a different part of that phase. Keyword research is in phase two. Uh, phase one is in the data analysis phase. Phase five is where we send reports. All these different things, all these things map to this. And we send this and show this to clients. So they're like, okay, these, these guys have a system. They have a framework for all this. So, wow, that was a lot of information. This went a lot longer than I thought it was going to go, but it's really important. Your service, your product is the most important part about all of this. It has to be high quality. You have to be able to get results. You have to be able to get them consistently. But on top of that, you've also got to be able to communicate to clients. You've got to be able to manage projects and accounts, send emails, all these different things. This is still a lot. You can see how it stacks up. So in the next video, what we're going to talk about is how to take these things, these very difficult chunks that require a lot of effort and turn them into a streamlined process. We want to take what we've done and productize it, turn it into a machine, something that we can baseline to get repeatable results. And then also take ourselves out of the equation and get people to come in and pick up parts of that process and run it themselves. That's how we grow. That's how we scale. That's how you reduce headaches. And that's ultimately how you're going to pull yourself out of your agency. So make sure you jump over to video number two. I'll see you guys there. Just going to jump back in here, guys, because I would be remiss if I didn't mention this, but we have these templates available for you guys. They're ready to be downloaded within the Blueprint Training. All you got to do is go to the link, the blueprint.training, check out all of our tools, all of our trainings. All these templates are in there and more. We have step-by-step -step video processes. We've got written SOPs for exactly how to run this service at an incredibly high and effective level. You can charge more from it. It's an agency in a box. I'll see you guys up there.